Today we are going to be looking at some real world programming. This is something as someone who writes or creates tutorials for programming who go, oh, can you give me a real world scenario for that? Well, a real world scenario is whatever your problem is. So we're going to write a program here, a bash script today, using the rules I've talked about in my previous video, which I'll talk about in a moment. Uh, but basically we're going to do something that I have to do at work all the time. Although I think the solutions have gotten better, we still don't have great solutions. As a firefighter, I need to make sure that our medical supplies are always stocked. So for the station or truck, I have to make sure that we have so many gloves, so many masks, so many band-aids, whatever. And it's something I do regularly in the interfaces like I said, have gotten better, but aren't perfect. Today we're going to look at doing it with a, with a bash script, which is something, is the way it should be done, uh, but in the real world scenario, scenario, unfortunately, most people don't use text interfaces, even though in many cases for something like this, they're far superior to a GUI interface. In a future video, we'll look at making GUI interfaces using HTML and JavaScript, and then we might even do, redo it again, the same code again, using Godot, and so you can compile stuff or package stuff for Windows, Mac, Linux. Everything I'm going to do today is cross-platform, runs natively on all systems. It's going to be a bash script or a shell script in general. And we're going to use primarily core tools. Uh, echo, read, wget, all these things can be found in one binary. Uh, BusyBox, which will run on all systems. You can get binaries for it for Windows. Uh, these type of tools are already going to be on your Mac and Windows, or Mac and Linux systems, and your Android systems probably already have them if you have a, a terminal emulator installed. Uh, the only thing outside those core tools that we're going to use is uh, FZF which is a free, open source, lightweight tool for filtering and searching through uh, lists in a fuzzy way, meaning as long as you type something kind of like what you're looking for, it should come up in the list and you can select it. And again, that's how you can get binaries for Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, BSD, it will run on your Android device. Uh, so you just would have to install it and it also you can get ARM compiles for it like I said so they can run on your Android devices. Well, the way I'm going to do this is like I talked about in the previous video where I talked about my rules. Uh, we're going to try to limit what the user inputs, force them to select from lists, the lists are going to be searchable, hence the FCF. And, but we're going to start off, we're going to, I'm going to show you how quick, rapid development we're going to create this application really really quick to someone who is brand new to programming, how they would do it but then we're going to improve upon it to show you that you can write a program like this in a couple of minutes, but then taking a few more minutes, you can make it a hundred times better. Let's jump right in. Okay, here we are. Also, I want to say this isn't like a step-by-step -step tutorial. I'm going to be going pretty fast, uh, but basically to give you the concepts of what I'm doing and why I'm doing them. You can see we are in a directory with nothing. Let's go ahead and create a script. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. Use whatever text editor you prefer, as long as it's a text editor and not a Word document editor. Uh, I'm going to call it um, order.sh. Okay, we're going to start off with our shebang line saying that this is a bash script or whatever shell you would like to use. Now, to do this, all we have to do is uh, basically some read commands. So, read dash p for prompt, and we're going to say, let's copy that a couple times. Whoops, that's from the last tutorial. <laughs> okay, enter your station, and we'll say station. Here we'll say, enter your name, and we'll say name, and we'll say item to order, item, and we'll say how many, and we'll just call that one uh, QTY for quantity. And that's all you have to do to get the information from the user. And we're going to submit this to a server. I've set up a script. Uh, let's see. Let's go here. Uh, you can go here, filmsidechris.com forward slash scripts forward slash 2022 med list. We have a few things here for this first part. We're looking at the submit uh, PHP. Basically, we're going to submit it and it's, just going to, it's not going to actually log anything. It's just going to echo back. Let's say we ordered 10 gloves. It would say 10 gloves ordered by Chris for station, whatever. So that's what we're going to do. Let's actually go ahead and copy this URL. And uh, it'd be best to put that in a variable. So I'm gonna say URL equals, paste that URL. And down here, we're just gonna say wget dash Q for quiet, because we don't want the, uh, you know, showing how much has been submitted and uploaded, but we're just gonna output uh, the response from the server to the shell. Next, we're gonna say dollar sign URL. And I'm going to say question mark. And we have our variables. I'm going to say station 
equals dollar sign station, which we collect up here. Okay. Next variable and name equals dollar sign name and item equals dollar sign item and dollar sign uh, quantity or sorry we got to say qty equals quantity you might ask why i put curly braces around this i really should be more consistent and do it around each of them if i'm going to do it basically i i I'm, i don't like that it was going to be next to this uh, dollar sign here i don't think it matters let's see my color oops color coding should tell me it's okay not to have the curly braces so i'll leave that so i don't confuse you i have videos on why you would use curly braces in certain situations so we save that We'll make it executable. Only have to do this once, once it's copied to a system. And then dot slash that, and it's gonna say enter your station. I'll say station 20. And I meant to put a space in 20. And again, this is why I going back to the rules of selecting from a list and not letting the user input stuff. Even there, I already messed up and didn't put a space in there. Or I may I just type 20 and not station 20. What do they want? I don't know, I'm just typing something in. Anyway, do I type my first name, last name here, last name, then first name? I'll just say, uh, Bob Smith, which is not how I would want it, uh, but that's how a user would probably input it. What am I going to order? Gloves, Excel, or is it Excel gloves? Again, if you don't give them a list, they don't know what to input, and it's gonna your database trying to search through is going to be horrific. Uh, and then how many? We'll just say ten. And it's submitted to the server. It responded, 10 gloves, Excel have been ordered by Bob Smith for Station 20. So to write a program that submits an order, a supply order, that's all you have to do. Thing is now if I want to order something else, I got to run the script again. I have to choose my station again. I have to choose my name again. And again, inputting this stuff manually is just not a good idea. So let's go ahead and make this better. <laughs> um, first off, let's use FCF and let's use lists. Uh, so if we go back to my web browser here, again, filmsdachris.com forward slash scripts forward slash 2022 and med list i have three lists here if i go here they're not going to look at lists but if i look at the the raw data you can see they're written as lists um why did i make them php files and not text files so they display properly in the websites because uh i'm assuming that you wouldn't have a static list you probably have a database that this is being generated from so if i was to grab the url for here and let's say i was a wget dash q capital o and you could use curl if you prefer. I do that, I get my list. That's great. Uh, the list is somewhat alphabetized, but not really, so I can just pipe that into sort, like we've talked about, and now I have an alphabetized list. How do you select from that? That's what FCF is for. So let's go ahead, we're going to grab our URLs here. So what I'm gonna do here is, now I could put the full URL for each one, uh, but I would say in general, that's, that could cause problems down the line. Uh, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna say URL for this and give it the directory list. And then I'm gonna create a variable called submit, one called um, stations, one called names, one called items. So I'm gonna say equals dollar sign URL forward slash submit.php for stations. I'm going to say that way if you move it to a different all these files to a different directory on your website you just have to change the URL variable once and not every single line. stations.php dollar sign URL names.php and hopefully I'm doing all these properly. Uh, this should be items, not item. Dot .php. And I, I, you know, the, I, I don't know if I mentioned earlier in the video, I have not, oh, it's called medical items. See, I need to make sure I enter these properly. So we have name, stations, and medical items. Um, I haven't written this script yet. I've thought it out in my head, but I have not written it. So I might hit some bumps along the way. I wanted to be uh, real with this. I, I did the server side stuff, but haven't written this script yet, but I've thought it out in my head. Okay, so down here for submit, uh, what we're gonna do is change this to submit. Okay, so we have our URLs 
Why did I put a dollar sign by the names there? Okay. But we're not going to use read at all. We're going to use FCF. So let's go ahead and delete all these. And the first thing we're going to get is stations. So what we're going to do is wget dash q, I'm oh sorry, dash q, capital O, and we're going to pass it stations, dollar sign stations. And we're going to want to put that into FCF. Let's go ahead and comment, the, comment out this bottom line and dash dash prompt and say select a station. Okay, let's go ahead and run this code, see if we've typed everything properly so far. Okay, that's a problem. I obviously messed up the URL for that. Uh, da, 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 da. Stations. Station, it's stations. That's why it was not found. So it's good to test your code as you're going. Now stations. I can type in 20, I get station 20. If I hit two, it gives me everything with number two in it. I hit enter and it outputs station 20. Perfect, let's go back into here. I'm going to say our station equals, and I'm gonna put that in quotations. Again, I'm not going over the details of this. I'm assuming you know basics of shell scripts for this video. It's not a tutorial, but more of an overlook. Okay, so we've grabbed that variable. Let's go ahead and just save ourselves some time, copy that. I'm gonna say name. So we're gonna get your name and this will change to names. And here is, I guess I could have left the select. Select your name, okay, from names. And then items, we're gonna say items, and we're actually gonna change this later on, but I'm going uh, basic stuff right now. Again, dollar sign, we're gonna say w get inside the parentheses. Dash Q O dash dollar sign items. Pipe that into FCF with a prompt of select an item to order. And the last one, we're going to get the quantity. So quantity equals, and then here I'm just going to say um, echo. Zero dot dot 100. I doubt there's any items I'm going to order 100 of, but I'll put the list that big and I'll pipe that into we want to have each thing on a new line. So we're going to say space, replace that with a new line. I did that in the other video. Again, there's probably a better way to do that. We're going to say FCF dash dash prompt and we're going to say how many. We can actually use the variable from the item above. How many dollar sign item would you like? Uh, let's just say, let's just say quantity or how many, sure, that works. And then we can uncomment that. And now if I typed everything properly, we're in our script station, I'll say station 20. I'll say John. Again, our, I, our list was not um, gloves, medical, large, how many, 55, there we go. And 55 gloves, medical large, have been ordered by Foster John for station 20. Let's go back into our script here, something I didn't do with names. With names, um, we are going to sort that because the list was not alphabetized, now it is. That's how easy it is to make things alphanumeric. You just pipe it through the sort command. Uh, if there were repeat items, we could also do sort dash u for unique, but there isn't in this list. That's great, so that's, that's a hundred times better than the original script and did not take that much longer to write. It takes a little more skill. You have to understand shell scripts a little bit better. But again, 20, John Foster, gloves, and 55. And again, I'm grabbing the list from the website so that if you have a new employee, you just update the list, the database online, and right away, they're available on all the computers running this script. Same with items. You add a new item, it's automatically there. You add in a new, you open a new station, you add that station in. But we can make it better, because now we're through. Now if I run it again, I have to pick my station again. I have to pick my name again. I shouldn't have to do that. If I have multiple items to order, I should be able to Start the script, tell it what station, my name, and then go item station, item state, or item amount, item amount, item amount. So let's go ahead, just exit out of this. Uh, so what we're gonna do here 
is all we have to do is just say while one do. Actually, I like to put that on this line here, I think. And we're gonna say done. Let's indent things properly. And the only issue with this is you may not see the output. So we have a choice. Do we pause for a moment so that they know the item has been ordered? We'll get to that in a moment. Again, all these different things you can do. Okay, so I'm going to order for station 55, we'll say this time. And we'll say that my name is Mary Schwartz. And now I'm going to order uh, baby aspirin. And I'll order 10 of those. And now it goes to the next item. It submitted the order. That's what I'm saying is right now we didn't see that it was ordered. So we probably want to give some output to that. The simplest way would just to be output that that has been ordered for a second and then go back in. It might slow down your ordering a little bit if you're one of those people who types really fast. But biohazard bag, so bio bag, uh, I'll order one of those. Next item, we'll say, yeah, just one of these. Okay, so we've already improved our script a lot, but now also I can't get out of my script without hitting control C a lot, which the average user would not know. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna make some changes. So after we submit an order, what I'm gonna say here is sleep for one second. And I might even clear the screen. I do like to clear the screen a lot, which is, well, okay, so let's go back, we'll order. Again, I'm starting it again, so now I'm gonna put in my order and also one of these sort of things is if I'm logged in as a user, it should know who I am, so I shouldn't have to put in my username, but we're just saying that we don't for this example. So we'll say station 22. Today I'll say that my name is um, Roger uh, Alan Rogers, okay? And uh, I can also, again, if I don't know what I'm looking for, I can look through the list, right? Let's say I want a cuff, a, a BP cuff. Oh, there we go, BP cuff, adult BP cuff. I just need one of those. That did not work like I thought it was going to. Let's order something else. Let's just order two of those. Hmm. Okay, let's X out. I did something in the wrong order here. Oh, I cleared the screen at the wrong point. That's why. Let's run it again. 22. Let's type in something, grab a random name. Um, yeah, one of these. And there we go. I see it has been ordered. Okay, or you could just you could just have it say order successful or whatever if the order was successful. Uh, we'll get some adult pads that should say electro pads. Again, I grabbed this medical list just off the inventory from where I work, so I didn't create this list. I ordered 66 of them, and you can see there for a second it tells you. Uh, you can do that. There's different ways, or you can have it prompt you different ways just so people know that they have ordered it. Um, now, again. To exit out, I have to hit Control C a couple times. So what we can do here is we can add a, a few checks. Also, I can also have it print out the full list of everything that was ordered at the end. So let's go ahead and start off with the exiting out properly. Uh, so I can add to any one of these lists ec uh, exit. Uh, I'm not gonna worry about station and name. What I'm gonna do is down here with item. Uh, so we're piping this output into FCF, what I can do is I should be able to say, echo. Oh, I think I could just say exit, or I could say quit. I usually like saying quit better. Quit. If I put parentheses around this, I think. We're also going to improve getting that list, which actually let's let's improve that first. Well, we'll test this out again. I'm doing this all off the top of my head. So station, we'll say 44, and I'll say uh, Mark Brown. There, my first option is quit, so I can choose that. And what I can do here is add in after this. I can say do an if statement. I can say dollar sign item equals quit, which I don't have to worry about case sensitive of it because it's going based on what you selected from a list. Well, if that's true, then exit. Okay. Or I could break out of the loop might be better in case I want to do something after this loop. So I'll say break should work. 
order. So again, I'll, I'll 30, station 34, I'll say um, Mark Norris, and I'll order something. I'll order five of these. I see it's ordered. Now I'm done, I just hit quit, and it exits out for me. I have quit. So actually, if we um, come in here, let's get rid of this clear. I think that might be better. So now if I do that, I'll say order. Again, I'll pick a station, 12. I'll pick another mark. And I'll order a few items. Again, baby aspirin. I'll order one of those, assuming it's bottles. Uh, now I'll order a uh, Ziploc bag, three of those. Oh, it's not putting it on new lines. We should. So now I quit. I was hoping it would give a full list out there. So let's actually go ahead and here, uh, Vim orders after the W get, we're just gonna say echo. Easy way to do that, adding a new line. So again, we'll go 78, station 78. We'll say Brown, one of the Brown people. What did that sound bad? Uh, Thompson Brown. Um, and I'll just pick a name from the list. I'll say 43 of these. There, that's been ordered. Uh, again, I don't have to put in my name or station. I'm just going to pick something, safety glasses for them. And you can see it's generating a list. So now when I hit quit, I can confirm everything that I ordered. Everything ordered great. One issue, one last issue with this code is that every time we loop, we're saying wget and we're getting the items. So we're doing an HTTP request every single time. We don't need that. We don't want that. So what I'm going to do up here is I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to replace items with its output of, and we will say that we get items inside this. So here when the script first runs, it's going to grab the items. And then here, all I have to do, I should be able to just say echo dollar sign, actually, no, one echo command now, dash, and for that, so we recognize the new lines. I believe I'm doing that right. Uh, dollar sign items. Let's go ahead and run our script. Pick a station. Pick a name. Nope, I did something wrong. Do 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 do. do. No, not that, and we're going to do echo. I, I'm not sure if that is my issue, but we're going to give that a try. Again, select a, select a station, select a name. Uh, looking for match, I'm missing line 11. Oh, forgot the quotation mark here. Select a station, select a name. Okay, now I can pick something from the list, order it. There we go. Select something else, order it. Select something else from the list, order it, and then I'm done. I can just hit quit. There we go. I mean, how long have I been recording? 20 minutes. So let's say you work somewhere in IT. There's so many IT guys that don't know how to program, and if you don't know how to program, you don't really know how computers work. Uh, this is a very, very, look at this. We, we've got 23 lines of code, if you count empty spaces, blank echo commands. I mean, really, uh, this is probably 15 lines of actual code. And it's not that complicated. If you're not a programmer, you might be confused by this, but these are basic shell scripts. This will run on any system. It's lightweight, so even if you had old hardware, uh, it should run pretty smoothly. Um, but this is how it should be done, in my opinion. I'm not saying it can't be improved upon. And yes, we did the, that first order with those four lines. Read this, read this, read this, read this, submit, and done. But this is so much easier for the end user, because now they select things from list, it's all searchable, they don't have to wonder what do I enter here, um, but also it's easier for you because they're not entering things you're not expecting. Uh, if they need to order something off the list, they should contact you through your email, say, hey, I need to order this, and then you can add it to the list. We're pulling stuff from the server, you add it to the list, and it's there right away next time they run this command. Um, they might have to exit out of the program if they already have it running. Uh, but that's it. I'll post this code up on Pastebin and uh, link to it in the description of this video. Uh, and again, if you want to access the lists, they're all here. You'll see that in the script. And again, the submit just echoes back uh, that with the variables you pass it. That's it. So yeah, um, in real life, if I needed to do this for work, it was 15 minutes worth of work 
and it makes life a lot easier. Again, nowadays, a lot of people don't like these text interfaces. It doesn't get any simpler than this, though. Uh, it, it's, it's fast to write. It runs on all hardware, almost all operating systems, at least all modern operating systems uh, natively. And, um, and it's super simple to use. Again, I, again, you would just have them click on an icon that runs the script. I wouldn't expect the average person to open up the terminal and, and run. Obviously, they would just type order or item, uh, you know, medical order or something like that. But you would give them an icon, either on their phone or on their desktop computer, and it opens up this. And they just start typing. It's very clear. I mean, you might have to walk them through it the first time, but it's fairly clear once you do it once what uh, they're, you're, you're expecting from them. Uh, bandage, bandage, ace bandage, three inches for these. And again, the item, this item list, I just grabbed from uh, my works item list. So things could be definitely written better. You can also have in it, like off to the side, like the minimum order. You can just have it listed here. It doesn't matter because you know exactly what they're going to put through. So you can parse through that on the server side. But that's it, and then I'm done. I hit quit, and they can confirm, okay, all that was ordered. And of course, on the server side, it'd be dumped to preferably a, a database, but it could just be a log file, which is super simple. Uh, and you can also have it text the, the person who fills the orders. Uh, when, when you exit out of that loop, you can have another order, or you can just have them have it to where anytime you know there's new stuff on the list, they get an email. Super simple. Super simple. And of course, there would be a timestamp and stuff on it. That's all done on the server side, not the client side. So they know when it was ordered. Now they know who it was ordered from. And again, things like the, the, the station and the, the user, especially the user, a lot of times you're going to be logged into a system. They should know who you are. Although a lot of places have this one, everyone logs in under the same username. So that's just weird. Um, yeah. Learn to do a little bit of program. goes a lot of way. Again, this is a text interface, which four forms is far superior than most GUI interfaces for stuff. Um, on the phone, on your phone, it would run just like this using the keyboard as fun. So like a GUI interface might be a little more convenient for a phone, but this would run fine on a phone. Um, but uh, obviously people feel more comfortable with GUI interface. So in the next video, we'll go over doing this sort of thing with, uh, with a web interface, which of course can be packaged as an application that but why would you do that? So people just log into the website and order stuff, um, making the list searchable and only having to put in the information once, not multiple times. Uh, and then also, I might also go over doing something like this in Godot, uh, which is a game engine, but I love using it for creating uh, applications as well. So thanks for watching. Check out filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There's a link in the description to my website. Check out there. You can check out my scripts, my codes. You can support me through LibrePay, PayPal, or Patreon. If you can't support me financially, think about liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting. I hope that you have a great day.